Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. For today's box opening we've got a Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth set booster box. So we haven't actually opened up an entire sealed box on the channel yet so I figured we'd crack this thing open, uh, take a look at all the cards, see what our box stopper is, and run the full MTG box analysis. So let's get cracking. Um, the One Ring found in Canada Somebody's, uh, I'm assuming, pretty darn excited about that. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't find it on the channel. That's okay. We did find a, a couple of One Rings, uh, of which, uh, you know, definitely some value in there. Uh, if you missed my three collector box uh, kind of recap and summary uh, and analysis, I encourage you to kind of go back and take a look at that. Um, I think it was a pretty good uh, compilation and, and kind of a, gave you a picture of what to expect when purchasing a few of those boxes. Um, did we win? No, we did not, but that's okay. Um, so let's go ahead and crack open these packs. Uh, we do have pull tabs, so that should make this a little bit easier. See what kind of cards we're going to get from the list, if any, although I would assume we'll get quite a few. All right, so we got ourselves a human soldier, followed by a spiteful banditry foil borderless coming in. This is very nice to see. Uh, this mythic is currently valued over $10 in non-foil. Uh, what a way to start off a box. Then we're going to see a Doors of Durin. Then we're going to see a Shire Sheriff Borderless with a Ranger's Firebrand, uh, Gollum's Bite. Then we're going to see Gandalf Sanction, followed by Soldier of the Grey Host, Eagles of the North, Escape from Orthonk, Chance Met Elves, and we're going to see the Elven Farsight, followed by a Full Art Swamp, and a Non-Signed Art Card. All right, so pack number one. A uh, pretty rock star pack. Let's see if we can't do any better. There we go. Hope uh, hope everyone had a good July 4th holiday, or at least those in the U.S. All right, so this one kicks off with an Orc Army, followed by a Foil Borderless Lash of Balrog. Then we're going to see a Mithril Coat coming in. This is going to be a pretty decent hit, value just over $8. Then we're going to see ourselves a Gandalf Friend of the Shire. Uh, Bilbo Retired Burglar, uh, Barrow Blade, then Frodo, then Baggin Porter, Mirror Mirror Guardian, with an Enraged Huron, with a Hobbit Sting, Pippin's Bravery, and a regular old Swamp, and another non-signed art card. Everybody getting hyped for Commander Masters? Uh, we're almost at that time. I think the, uh, the set's going to be revealed here in less than a week. Uh, so we do get our first list card. We get an Empyrean Eagle from M20, just an uncommon, followed by a Goblin Fire Leaper in foil. And then we're going to see Gimli Mournful Avenger as our rare, followed by a Pippin's Bravery Borderless, uh, Voracious Fell Beast, also in Borderless, with a raise, excuse me, Rise of the Witch King, Gollum Patient Plotter, Samwise the South Hearted, Tale of... Tinuvel, with many partings, second breakfast, a lamboss, then a full art swamp, with another non-signed art card. Right, okay. I think we got another list card here. We are going to see the Battle Wand Oak coming in. Very cool. Then we're going to see Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, and uh, Golon Dwarf Emissary is our rare. With a Gandalf Friend of the Shire, er Erwin Lady of Rohan, there's Reprieve, the one uncommon uh, other than a Nazgul, currently valued over a dollar. Then we're going to see Faramir Field Commander, a Relentless Rurium, Rally at the Hornburg, Coral's End, followed by Pelagir Survivor, uh, Woe's Pathfinder, then we're going to see ourselves a regular old mountain, and our first signed art card there. Very nice. This is going to be uh, the Cavern Horde Dragon. So very cool to see that. We've got our first signed art card. All right, this one kicks off with a Tentacle Token, followed by a Galathrium Bow. And then we're going to see uh, Sharky Tyrant of the Shire as our rare with a Nasty End Borderless, uh, Grishnok a Brash Instigator with a Gron the Gatebreaker, a Goblin Fire Leaper, uh, Dundane Rangers with a Shortcut to Mushrooms. Then we're going to see Protector of Gondor with Errand Rider of Gondor, Stalwarts of Osgalarth with our Forest, 
and another non-signed art card. Curious to see how many Nazguls we'll get in this box. Um, hopefully we'll get at least one, but maybe we'll get two. So we got ourselves a food token, followed by Slip on the Ring, and then we're going to see Baromir, Warden of the Tower, coming in as our rare. Uh, does hold a little bit of value. Then we're going to see a second rare, Assault on Osgoloth, followed by a Peregrine Took, then a Ring Sight, Fiery Inscription, Bitter Downfall, Banish from Adorus, Inherited Envelope, Bombadil Song, Slip on the Ring, and a Foil Island with a, another non-signed art card there. So I believe that was our first double rare pack, if I'm not mistaken. All right, we got ourselves the Ring Token, followed by Celeborn the Wise. And then we're going to see Flowering of the White Tree coming in as our rare. Decent rare, value just over $4. With Rosie of South Lane, Ranger's Firebrand, Gollum's Bite, Gandalf Sanction, with Bewitching Leechcraft, Morgul Knife Wound, Fog on the Barrow Downs, Birthday Escape, then we're going to see an Arwen's Gift, a, a Full Art Map Island, and another non-signed art card. So the Spiteful Banditry, definitely our most valuable hit so far. And we're going to see the Dwarven Miner coming in from the list, followed by Mirror Mirror Guardian in Foil, with a Glam Dream coming in uh, as a Mythic hit, value just over $3. Good Mythic hit there. And then we're going to see ourselves Lash of the Balrog and Borderless, Council of Council's Deliberation, Stone of Erek, The Bath Song, Soldier of the Grey Host with Eagles of the North, Escape from Orthonk, with a Hithkin Knots, then a Willow Wind, then a Full Art Island, and another non-signed art card. Wow, another list hit here. Mythic. We're going to see uh, Caladra Complete. Very cool to see that. Legendary artifact equipment from the list. All right, we'll put that over in our Mythic piles. Then we're going to see the Bath Song in Foil, followed by a second Mythic, Arwen Mortal Queen. Very nice. And that'll do it, just a double Mythic pack. Then we're going to see Gimli Counter of Kills and Showcase with a Fearfire Foes, Foray of Orcs, March from the Black Gate, the Grey Havens, and then Glory Findle Dauntless Rescuer, Grey Havens Navigator, Nimrod Watcher, Haunt of the Dead Marshes with a Forest, and another non signed art card. That was a pretty nice pack. All right, got ourselves the Orc Army with a Pippin's Bravery, Foil Borderless coming in. And then we're going to see Born Upon a Wind as our rare with a Mirkwood Bats, Arwen Undomino, Celeborn the Wise, Mirror of Galadriel, Isolation of Orthonk, Fire of Orthonk. Uh, excuse me, those are, yeah, Orthonk. Uh, then we're going to see Chance Met Elves with an Elven Farsight, uh, Lothalorian Lookout with a Forest, and yet again another non signed art card. All right, so just one signed art card in the uh, first stack. Not really worth much, um, but, you know, to the right person. We've got ourselves a food token here with a Mines of Moria rare foil coming in with a Spiteful Banditry. So now we have two of these, one from the main set and one in foil borderless. This one's valued just around $9. And then we're going to see ourselves an Oilophant in, foil bo or in borderless, non-foil. Goblin Fire Leaper, Fear Fire Foes, Foray of Orcs, Fiery Inscription, Bitter Downfall, Grey Haven's Navigator, Nimrod Watcher, Haunt of the Dead Marshes, A Plains, and another non signed art card. So, so far, no Nazgul's. Right, got ourselves our first non token token here, followed by Woe's Pathfinder. And we're going to see the Shire from the Land Cycle coming in as our rare. Followed by Many Partings, Voracious Fell Beast, Shadow Summoning, Theoden, King of Rohan, Gift of Strands, Gandalf, Friend of the Shire, Generous Ent, 
Mushroom Watchdogs, Snarling Warg, an Island, and another non-signed art card. All right, we got some food, followed by Mary Doc Brandy Buck, and then we're gonna see Fanghorn Tree Shepherd coming in as our rare, with Foray of Orcs, Mouth of Sauron, Elrond Lord of Rivendell, Heroes, excuse me, Horses of the Bruinwin, uh, Ent Drop Basin, Sam's Desperate Rescue, an Oilifant, Mirkwood Spider, Mirkwood Bats, and then the Island. And another non-signed art card. All right, another ring token to kick this one off. With a Bewitching Leechcraft as our foil. With an Isolidar's Fateful Strike as our rare. With a Gothmog Morgul Lieutenant. Then Ulok of the White Hand. Long List Events. Uh, Entis Restoration. Quick beam upstart ent. Now for wrath, now for ruin. With an Ithilithin Kingfisher, a Dunlin Creebane, Deceiver of the Messenger, Mountain, and a non signed art card. And I'm just going to break down my stack of commons uncommons because they're falling all over the place. All right, moving on. So we're about halfway through the box, I would say. So far, no Nazguls um, and no Orcish Bowmasters or rings, other than the token. All right, food, followed by Smeagol in foil rare with a Forge Anew coming in with an Oliphant, Landreval Horizon Witness, uh, Menloir Swift Survivor, Gwathir the Windlord, Breaking of the Fellowship, Glorious Glead, Dreadful, of, Dreadful as the Storm, Treason of Isengard, Swarming of Moria, followed by a Plains, and a, another non-signed art card. That's the Dead Martius. Okay. I was like, there's not much going on in that picture. What, what is that? All right. So this one starts off with some food, followed by Wizard's Rockets. Whenever I see this card, I just immediately think Infinity, you know, without looking down here. All right. <laughs> And then right behind that, we're going to see the One Ring. Very nice. Coming in from the main set. Uh, value currently right around $60. So we're going to make ourselves a new stack up top of Mega Hits. That is awesome. And then right behind that, we're going to see Elrond, Master of Healing. Followed by Galadriel, uh, Elven Queen, coming in from Commander. Fantastic. What a pack. And then we're going to see Gollum, Patient Plotter. Followed by Gorbag of Minas Morgul, Sauron's Trickery, Sauron the White, Claim the Precious, The Black Breath, Urak High Berserker with an Island, and a signed R card. This is going to be Treebeard Gracious Host by Campbell White. Very cool. Now that was an amazing pack. Now if we can get one more ring, this box will be definitely a profitable box. Um, because we've already got the best card that we can pull. Unless, of course, somehow we find a borderless version. All right, so we got ourselves a human soldier with a golem's bite, followed by Mary Esquire of Rohan. Then we're going to see Erwin Fearless Knight in borderless, Knights of Dol Amroth, Stern Scolding, You Cannot Pass, Lost Legend, uh, Mordor Trebuchet with Rush the Room. Olog High Crusher, the War Beast of Gorgamoth, a Foil Mountain, and another non-signed art card. Very cool to see the One Ring showing up in a set booster pack. The Foil Extended Art version of that, which can only be found in the Commander Samplers, um, is off the charts crazy. Uh, more than $750 for that card, if you can find it. So we got ourselves a Spirit with a Dreadful as the Storm, followed by One Ring to Rule Them All, and then Mines of Moria, second rare, followed by Prince Emerald Affair, Legolas Counter of Kills, Friendly Rivalry, Gimli Counter of Kills, Cast Into the Fire, Galadrium Guide, Galadrium Bow, Shower of Arrows, with an Island, 
and another non-signed art card. All right, another non-token token mini game here with War of the Last Alliance coming in as our foil rare. Very cool, does hold some value. Then we're gonna see Legolas Master Archer, second rare with a quick beam upstart Ent, uh, Gormog Morgul Lieutenant, Mordor Urok High Captain, Book of Mars Mazar Mazarbol with Bill Fernie, Brees Windler, Bill the Pony, Revive the Shire, Brandywine Farmer, and then we're going to see a Took Reaper with the Plains and another non signed art card. All right, got some foil goodness behind this. It is going to be the Shire, Foil Borderless, followed by the Ringo South. And then we're going to see the Oilophant with Rising of the Day, Shadowfax, Lord of Horses, Oath of the Grey Host, Smite the Deathless, Addle Scarred Goblin, Troll of Kazkadum, Shire Scarecrow with a Shire Terrace, Foil Swamp, and uh, Smeagol, non signed. All right, we're back to the list. We're going to see Fortifying Provisions coming in with Prince uh, Immerhal the Fair. And then we're going to see Horn of the Mark as our main set rare with a Rivendell coming in as a foil or as a borderless rare with Knights of Dol Amroth. I already saw that. With Council's Deliberation, Stone of Arik, The Bath Song, Isolation of Orthonk, uh, Lorthian Lookout. Galadrium Guide, Galadrium Bow with the planes, and another non signed art card. All right, so we got the Ballistic Boulder coming in here for the Trebuchet, followed by Entdraught Basin, and then we're going to see a Delighted Halfling. Very good hit from the main set, uh, valued just around $18. So even though it's not a mythic, I'm going to put it in the mythic pile because it's that darn good. All right, then we're going to see Rising of the Day with the Grey Havens, uh, Glory Findle, Dauntless Rescuer, Arwin Undamiel, Fire of Orthonk. Uh, then we're going to see Cast in the Fire, Smite, List, Smite the Deathless, Shower of Arrows, the Shire Scarecrow, a Foil Swamp, and another non-signed art card. It's turning out to be a really good box, in my opinion. We'll run the full MTG box analysis and make sure, but uh, feels really good. There's the ring again in token with an Ithilin Kingfisher and then a Goldberry River Daughter with Saradoc Master of Buckland. And then we're going to see Fear Mirror Field Commander, Celeborn the Wise, Mirror of Galadriel. Legolas, Counter of Kills, Battle Scarred Goblin, Troll, Cascadum, Kazka, Lorien Revealed, Revive the Shire, The Forest, and another non signed art card there. Very cool set. I like this. All right. And then we got ourselves a Tentacle with Four of Orcs. And we're going to see Sting the Glinting Dagger coming in as a rare from the main set with a Dunling Creebane. March uh, from the Black Gate, uh, Gothmog Morgul Lieutenant, uh, the High Captain with a friendly rivalry, Gimli Counter of Kills, Brandywine Farmer, Took Reaper with a Nimble Hobbit, a Mountain, and yet again another non signed art card. Right, just restack up again. I think we got about six packs to go and then we'll get to our box topper. Hopefully we find something equally as amazing as the one ring in there. So we got the Orc Army, followed by Claim the Precious, and then Eorwin, Fearless Knight, followed by Frodo Baggins, Rising of the Day, Lord of Horses, Oath of the Grey Host, Wizard's Rockets, Ents Fury, East Farthing Farmer, Eastmark Cavalier, the Westfold Rider, the Plains, and there we go. We got another non-signed art card there, or excuse me, a signed art card. And this is going to be Fog on the Barrow Downs by Marco. Very cool to see that. Unfortunately, I dented the corner when opening up with the uh, pull tab. Oh well. 
I don't believe that's going to be a high value signed uh, art card, as most of them are not. So we got another mini game here with an uh, East Farthing Farmer, followed by Planeteer of Ornthonk. Very nice. It's going to be another mythic valued over $10. So this box is doing extremely well. And then right behind that, of course, we get ourselves a Nazgul number 336, another card valued uh, just around $17. Very cool. Um, and then we're going to see Many Partings, Bill Fernie, Bree Swindler, Bill the Pony, Stu uh, the Conies, Great Hall of the Citadel, followed by an Esquire of the King, Knights of Dal Amroth, Dundane Blade, Foil Forest, and a Horn non-signed art card. So that was a really good pack too. So that was like a $30 pack right there. Very nice. All right, list hit here. What do we get? What do we get? We're going to see a dig up uh, coming in from Crimson Vow. Not a high value list hit. Followed by Shortcut to Mushrooms in Foil with a Horn of Gondor. Uh, that was the art card we just got. Followed by Rosie uh, Cotton of South Lane. That might be our third copy of the Border List in this box. Followed by Shire Sheriff, Butterbur Bree Innkeeper, Rosie Cotton, Gimli's Axe, Gimli's Fury, Ebor Flamesmith, Improvised Club, Lash of the Balrog, Full Art Mountain, and another non-signed art card. All right, we're down to three packs here. Will we see a Bowmasters? No, not yet, but we do see a Kietra Triome coming in from the list. This is going to be a really good hit. I don't recall the exact value, but this is one of the higher value cards from the list. So we'll put that over in our cool pile. Then we're going to see the Grey Havens Foil Borderless with Press the Enemy. Followed by Mount Doom Mythic coming in. Very nice to see that. Um, does hold some value, just around $8 or so. We'll put Mount Doom over here with our spiteful banditries. Samwise the South Hearted, uh, Grimma Wormtongue, Iorath the Healing House, Eomer of Riddlemark, Easterling Vanguard, surrounded by Orcs, Orcish Medicine, Mordor Muster. Then we're going to see ourselves a forest and another non signed art card. So, yeah, we're down to two packs here. So much value. Is it enough, though? I do want to let you know that um, you can purchase these boxes from trollandtoad.com. Uh, currently, right now, as of the filming of the video, the, the set booster boxes are going for $169.95, which is a few dollars less than TCG player market price. Um, and if you use my code, MTGBOX5 at checkout, you can save 5% off of that price. Um, as long as you purchase uh, the item directly from Troll and Toad and not through one of their merchant, merchant accounts, uh, just use MTGBOX5 at checkout. All right, so we got a human soldier, followed by Rush the Room. And then we're going to see Aragorn, company leader, with a Dunlin Crebane, uh, Lord of Westfold, Prince Immerhall, Ranger of the North, uh, the Spearmaster, the Lancer, uh, Torment of Gollum, Smoothing of Smeagol, excuse me, Soothing of Smeagol. Then we get Captain of Umbar, Foil Island, and a non signed R card. All right, very cool. All right, final pack, and then our box topper. What is in here? All right, we got an orc army. Do we get the bowmasters to go with it? We're gonna see a battle scarred uh, goblin, followed by a scroll of Isladar, and that'll be our only rare with the Merkwood bats, Book of Marsibol, uh, Denethar, Old Man Willow, Peregrine Took, Mary Doc Brandybuck, the Nasty End. Uh, Sirith Ungle Patrol, Shilab's Ambush, a regular old swamp, and a non signed R card. All right, very cool. Lots of rares, lots of mythics, lots of value on the board. I think we even did okay in our list hits. So now it is box topper time. So I'll just uh, take a quick second, try and get this off as easily as we can. Okay, fully sealed. What will it be? We're going to see a Dol Amroth. Very cool. All right, which is a uh, Mianmo School of Water's Edge. Foil borderless coming in from the commander. 
All right, fantastic. So give me just a second. I'll get everything sorted, organized, and be right back with the MTG box analysis. We'll begin today's MTG box analysis by taking a look at the cards that we were eligible to obtain from a set booster box and compare that to the cards that we actually saw. Then we'll review set coverage, coverage by rarity, as well as duplication. To establish a baseline for value, we'll analyze the value of the set and then break down the actual observed value in the box, both by non-foil and foil. Finally, we'll conclude with a summary. If you want to go deeper into the analysis and see all of the metrics for this box and more than 125 others, simply join the channel at the Give Me the Data level. Let's get things started by comparing the cards that we saw in today's box to the cards that we were eligible to see. Using this chart, we can see the non-foils we observed in green, the foils we observed in orange, and the cards we were eligible to see in gray as the baseline. In the non-foil space, we saw a variance of six cards between the primary colors of Magic, with white having the least at 38, and red and green being tied at 44. Also in the non-foil space, we saw two of the Jumpstart rares, nine showcase cards, 27 borderless, and one standard frame card from the Commander subset. In the foil space, we saw at least one card for each of the main categories, including six foil borderless scene cards. Moving into coverage, in the non-foil space, we saw 261 of the 377 cards we were eligible to see, which gave us 69% coverage. Our highest coverage among the primary colors of Magic was a tie between blue and green, each covering 89% of the set. In the foil space, we saw 36 of the 377 cards, which gave us 10% coverage of the cards that we were eligible to see. This time around, our highest coverage among the primary colors of Magic was in green, with 16% coverage. Pivoting to coverage by rarity, we ended up seeing 100% of the commons and 87% of the uncommons we were eligible to see in non-foil. We also saw 31 rares for 30% coverage and 6 non-foil mythics for 17% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 13% of the commons and 10% of the uncommons, along with 4 rares for 4% coverage and a single foil mythic for 3% coverage. This means that we saw 35 rares and 7 mythics from the main set, plus 3 more rares and 2 additional mythics from the commander subset along with the list, bringing the grand total up to 38 rares and 9 mythics in these 30 packs. In today's box, we didn't see any duplication among the 36 foils that we pulled, but we did see 60 cards duplicated twice and a single card duplicated 3 times. This gave us a box duplication rate of 17%. Before we take a look at the value in today's set booster box, let's baseline with a review of the cards that we could have pulled using non-foil market prices as of July 8th, 2023. Currently, the main set features 29 cards valued over $10. Here's a quick look at the market prices for the top six. Yes, there are currently six cards valued over $20 that you can pull from a set booster pack. Now, the set also features 16 cards valued between $5 and $10, and 45 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 287 cards are currently valued under a dollar. If you were to add up the market value of all 377 cards that you can pull, you would be looking at a grand total of $855.07 in market value. Now that we have an understanding of how the set is performing, let's begin to take a look at the value that we saw in this box starting off in the non-foil space. In today's box, we ended up seeing four non-foils from the main set valued over $10. This is pretty impressive for a set booster box. We saw the Planeteer of Orthonk valued at $10.07. We saw Nazgul number 336 valued at $14.77. We saw the Delighted Halfling valued at $16.60. And we saw the One Ring valued at $66.19. We also saw three non-foils valued between $5 and $10 and 13 non-foils valued between $1 and $5. The other 303 non-foils are currently valued less than a dollar. Now in the foil space, we only saw a single card valued over $10, which was in pack number one, and it was the Spiteful Banditry in full borderless, currently valued at $10.83. We didn't see any foils valued between $5 and $10, and only three foils valued between $1 and $5. The other 32 foils in the box are currently valued less than a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box through TCG Player during pre-order for $170.27, not including taxes. The current market price for these boxes as of July 8th is just above that at $173.77. Today's set booster box contained 30 packs, each with 12 cards. This allowed us to see 360 total cards, plus a box topper, some tokens, cards from the list, and art cards. In today's box, we saw 27 non-signed and 3 signed art cards, which have a total market value of $12.97. 
The one card from Commander, Galadriel, Elven Queen, wasn't worth much at only 17 cents. Replacing seven of our tokens were cards from the list, and they have a total value of $20.68, thanks mostly due to the Caladra Complete and Kietra Triome. The 23 tokens that we saw have a market value of $3.25. The 30 basic lands are currently valued at $10.52. The 151 commons in the box are currently valued at $9.79. The 136 uncommons that we saw are currently valued at $32.73, with about half of that coming from the Nazgul. The 35 rares have a current market value of $62.37, and the 7 mythics that we pulled are valued at $109.65, mostly due to the One Ring. Finally, our box topper was the Dahl Amroth, which is currently valued at $22.61. Add it all up, and the grand total for this box comes out to be $284.74 in market value, which is a gain of $114.47 over the price I paid, which means that I saw a return of 167% of my purchase price in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we ended up seeing 19 cards valued over 2 bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $209.42, which means that those 19 cards represent 74% of the box total and exceeded my purchase price for the box. Get early access to videos, download the analysis for every box open on the channel, and personally DM me, just like these fine people, all by becoming a member of the channel through YouTube or over at mtgboxanalysis.com. You'll find links in the description. Until next time, do something amazing.